everyone, let's go to London. Yes, you heard that right. I leveled up to international traveling in my attempt to get back into traveling this year. And I am less anxious and less nervous on the outside and surface level than I have been with all the other traveling I did this year. So the strategy to get back into traveling by traveling is not the wrong one. But I can't say I've slept well. I've had pretty damn exhausting dreams. So I guess anxiety sits down a little deeper with this. And I'm my flight is at 4.30. It's about 12.30 now. I'm going to the airport. I'm going to be early at the airport, but I am worried about the stupid things of missing my flight, having problems with my passport, with my phone not working, where my boarding pass is, and all these little things. And I also am not really sure about the hotel I booked. I thought it's closer to Tate Modern than it actually is, and I apparently have to take a ferry to get to it. I didn't plan that, so... There's a lot of things I did not foresee, but I'm optimistic that everything will go well because I've done it before, I can do it again. Well, hello, good morning. I completely forgot to vlog yesterday. The travel trip or the trip here was rather unexciting or uneventful. I spent way too much time at the airport because I was there way too early. The flight was okay. Getting into London, we circled a little bit and couldn't land, so we got in late. I missed the tram I was supposed to get, and then that tram was late, and I didn't get into my hotel till 8 p.m. or something. So I was mostly tired. It was dark, and I went for a walk, and I'm a little bit further out than I expected. As I noticed already the last time, I'm not good at booking hotels. I mean, it's a nice hotel, don't get me wrong. I'll give you a room tour once they cleaned it up again, but it's further out than I expected. It's at the Docklands, it's across from Canary Wharf, and for some reason I didn't think it was across from Canary Wharf, but a little bit further down or up, closer to Tate Modern, which is closer to the city, but it's not so... I have no idea how I did that. Anyways, I have to face a challenge now that I packed one pair of running clothes or exercise clothes and I want to go running, but as it's the hotel is not where I thought it was, I cannot run along the Thames because it's not, the pathway is not there, the one that I expected. So there is a park across from the hotel somewhere. I might get lost. It looks a little bit weird. Anyways. And I'm also not sure if I should have packed long sleeves. I packed this, a t-shirt. But it's about 10 degrees outside. I miscalculated. I wasn't thinking when I was packing. Anyways, we'll see how that goes. So challenge to go downstairs to this labyrinth of a hotel. It's a labyrinth. My room is through hallways and hallways and hallways and I don't even know. I get lost all the time. And then I have to pass all these business people because apparently there is something businessy going on here and it's a business hotel, more or less. Confused. I'll tell you about the book I finished in bed this morning after I ran. I'm back from my run and I got lost as usual. I wanted to run around this green patch on the map that looked like a park and I found a way or I looked for running routes by others and someone found a route around the park and I thought I can do that it's about three miles that's a good length and I completely got lost I was somewhere else but it didn't matter it was very nice it's a very beautiful area here for living I really think there's a lot of residencies here and also hotels probably and rentals but very quaint and I think there's a college that I passed so very nice very nice area and by light, it doesn't look so scary as the park looked last night. But I wanted to tell you about the book I finished this morning, Death and the Penguin. I've been reading that for a couple of days, and the more I read it, the less I liked it, which is very sad because it started off very funny and, yeah, interesting. It's all about this young man, a writer, or he's not that young anymore. 
he's not very talented and he hasn't been published, but he writes. So one day he writes a short story and tries to get it published in a newspaper. But the people are not very interested. And then one editor calls him back and says, I really like your style. Would you be interested in writing obituaries for us? And that's what he does then. But the obituaries are not for people who have already died, but people who might die in the future. So he's basically writing obituaries for death that hadn't happened yet. And that is a fun idea. The outlook is it's in Kiev in the 90s, mid 90s, I think. And I wanted to look up the political situation there because I think it was an upheaval or revolution or some shift in power. But it's not really mentioned in the book. What turns out to come across the more you read in the book is that the people who are dying are all important people or some people of power. And we don't really know much about them either. It's all happening outside of the author's periphery. He's not really paying attention. He's getting paid very, very well to do the obituaries. And that's what he does. He wants to write. He does the obituaries. He lives well. And the more and more and the more we learn about the situation, the more shady it gets. But then it also comes to pass that he is drawn into things that he cannot escape. And the more the story evolves, the more we find him trapped in this space, this life, this world. And you feel oppressed a little bit, but more hopeless in things happen to him and he's not the instigator. Oh, and then there's the penguin. He has a pet penguin. So that also gets some attraction. There's a lot more going on, but overall, I really like the characterization, the way the story tells us about the people we meet and how they interact. It's very emotionless, even the relationship he ends up having and the people around him he has relationships with or engagement with. It's all very detached and emotionless. And it's partly him, but it's partly also the narration style. And that's fun too. So overall, I think what the book didn't benefit from was for me that it kept getting more and more oppressive and I didn't like that. So basically feeling like that and the hopelessness that the more things evolve, he realizes that he doesn't have a say in his life anymore. He's basically like a pinball pushed around. And when things turn really, really bad, he needs to do something and he does. So there's a second book, which I don't really know how that is possible. So I'm not sure if it's just about another character and another penguin or if it's about the same ones, but I'm currently not really interested in picking up the sequel. But anyways, maybe read the synopsis and give the book a try if you're interested, because like I said, in the beginning, it was really fun to read and it was engaging and captivating. And the more I read it, the more oppressive it took the church. And now I need to read something funny. That's actually the plan for today. My plan is, since I'm close to Greenwich, I'm going to spend my day in Greenwich Market. Supposedly nice there. I've never been. And I want to find a bookstore because I didn't bring any physical books. I brought my Kindle, but that's where the book I finished. And somehow I can't connect it to the Wi-Fi in the hotel. I think my Kindle is old. Anyways, I definitely wanted to not only spend my vacation book shopping, but I need to start to get some reading done or find a book. So I'm going to look for a bookshop in Greenwich and then look around Greenwich. And up there is my ferry that I take to get to the other side, to my hotel over there. Let's have a quick room tour. Actually, there's not much. There is a bed. There's a view. The view is not so bad. You look out there. It's nice. And there's a nice area with tables and coffee machine, T 
TV. That's nice. There's room here. I like that. Some space. And there's the bathroom. Nothing special. Looks clean. Hello. And that's it. That's all there is to the room, which is enough. I have a feeling this is an awkward angle, but honestly, it's very blurry on the camera screen. I been out too much, reading too much, looking too much, everything is blurry. Anyways, um, it's evening of my first full day in London. I didn't really leave the area. As planned, I spent the day in Greenwich or most of the day in Greenwich. I had some breakfast or coffee and a muffin a little further down the Thames path. It's a little quaint place it was very cute sat down and actually journaled a little bit instead of reading that was nice i haven't done that properly in a long time i used to write more travel journals in more detailed way and just more like morning pages and now that my mind or my mind frame space is coming back a little bit i also have more space for writing again so that sounds nice it really was a nice and relaxed start of the day because it was sunny, it was very warm. I could watch over the Thames and watch people going by and coming and going and that was nice. And then I had looked up the way down to Greenwich Market and it was about an hour. I listened to my audiobook. I was nice. I was very hot at some point because I was dressed for cold weather but walking that much made it warmer and in the sun but it was nice and as i needed a new book my first stop in greenwich was waterstones i got a little bit distracted and honestly how do people manage to vlog in bookstores i was completely overwhelmed with all the other people there i didn't feel comfortable vlogging and outside there was a uh, construction going on so i didn't even vlog outside take any pictures of waterstones but i came back with remember what i said that i wanted to buy a book read it and then i was only allowed to buy another book yeah that didn't happen i bought the first book because it was in a stand-up or decoration with a lot of other shorter books that I really enjoyed. So it was paired with all these other books by authors or books I already read and liked. So it drew my attention with the cover. It's a beautiful cover. The Salmon Who Dared to Leap Higher has a good title and it's all about basically life and discovering life, looking at it from a different angle. And it's about a salmon swimming back upstream to do what salmons do and being curious about the world, asking questions, everyone around them. And they're a little bit of an outsider because they have silver scales instead of uh, the white and blue ones that the salmons have when they go upstream before they turn red. And yeah, so it's a little bit of that. I read about half of it already. I'm hoping to finish today or tomorrow, who knows. But that was a book that I bought because I wanted to read. And after that, I just thought, let's have another look around the bookstore because you're in the bookstore. And that's the reason why it's very good that I'm not living around good bookstores with all the books that I want to read and all the nice flashy covers. Because when I ambled into the science fiction and fantasy era, I saw this one. Look at the cover and the bag has a hotel again or whatever that is. This is a book that I forgot where I heard about, but it's apparently about dreams that you can buy and about someone who works in the store where you can buy dreams and then they come true. Maybe. I forgot the content. I didn't really look at what this is about because I just remembered I wanted to have it and I was all, oh, beautiful cover. You know me, covers, titles, can't help. And it's the Dalagut Dream Department Store. So what can you do wrong? And the dream that you ordered is sold out. Oh no, yeah, that sounds um, quite familiar. Anyways, so that's what happened at Waterstones. And then I walked around Greenwich Market and I noticed again that I never really know what other people do. Since I'm 
not in the materialistic shopping category of person. I really don't like shopping that much. I don't buy many things. I'm not someone to go shopping for hours and hours and hours, never have been. And even though I look around markets a little bit when I'm traveling, I never really know how to spend hours there. So I basically looked around the market, thought it was nice, it was interesting. There were nice food stalls, but while I was on Waterstones, it apparently rained a lot because everything was wet, but I missed it. And I was getting hungry and I also wanted to start reading. So the idea of street food is very appealing but not when I'm traveling and I just basically want to sit down and read. So I walked around the area, looked at all the cute little streets and the places that they have. And then I found a place to have some food. And that's what I did. I spent about an hour or two reading there before I went on to my second plan of the day, leaving Greenwich through the foot tunnel. So there's a tunnel under the Thames that was built oh, at the end of the 19th century. I think it was opened in 1902. That's the date I remember. Did they start 1899? And 100% sure on that one. So that's going through the tunnel. That was really wild. I walked down the spiral stairs, but I took the elevator up. I'm not gonna walk up 87 steps, no. And then I walked around on the what is that Do isle of dogs i don't know why it's called that and i didn't see much i walked the, the thames pass again to canary wharf and then at canary wharf i wanted to basically sit down with some pastry and coffee but i got a little bit distracted by my audiobook because i wanted it to be over so that's always a bad sign i was listening or i listened to Paladin's grace and I've always thought about trying that or not. It's by T. Kingfisher and I like T. Kingfisher's writing style, but I'm not always into what she writes about. And so this was another members club audible free audiobook. So I downloaded it and thought I could give it a try. And as expected, I liked the writing. The audiobook was really well done, but I'm not 100% sure what the story wanted to do. So I like the world building that the paladins are serving a god and this one god died. So all the paladins went berserk and the some or the few that are left over are helping with other, what is it, congregations? They're, they're with the rats and the rats are for laws and medicine. So they are helping there and protecting because that's what they do. They protect and they are fighters. And we're mostly following one of them and a perfume maker. So the story, how they meet and all of that is interesting, but the story follows a storyline and their romance and their romance I at some point got annoyed I was wondering if that is what some people call or what people call slow burn because it really took a long time till they really were both on one side but a lot of times before they were interested but not interested didn't know what they wanted didn't know what the other wanted communication would have helped but then not the easiest part and they had awkward conversations all the time so everything made sense but it wasn't that entertaining or captivating and then on the other side there is of course another story and that's that the perfume maker made a perfume for a visiting prince to the country and then the prince apparently was murdered and she got arrested it feels from the beginning like she's framed. Well, we know she didn't do it, but it already feels like framing her for a murder. So there's a lot of shady things going on, but it didn't feel like this was the focus of the story. There also was a serial killer going along and there were severed hats everywhere. And that was also solved, but nothing really felt like it was the main story. So it felt like it was addressing all these story parts around the characters in an interesting and funny way. So I liked the conversations. I liked 
Even though it was annoying, the thoughts they had about why they didn't go forward and what their troubles and worries were with having a relationship and starting a relationship and the misinterpretations and all of that was good. It just bored me a little bit after some point and I wanted more story, more focus and all of it fizzled along somehow. And yeah, I don't want to continue the series. I'm glad I listened to it finally and know what it's about. It's not what I expected. I never really bothered reading the synopsis. Do you ever do that when you have an author, you know you want to read their work, that you just pick up when you see a book by them and they publish something or read their backlog without really checking if that is something that you're interested in? Happens to me a lot, aside from buying books because I look beautiful. But when it's an author, I know it's even worse. So I'm at it walking again, basically from Canada Wharf to Borough Market or Borough Yards. I want to see an exhibition. I think that's there. Anyways, I finished another audiobook and I thought I could tell you while I'm walking there. Of course, there are people everywhere and we all know how I feel about that. But anyways, I finished re-listening to Burning Roses. This is a novella I've read before. It's sort of the third in the series and I haven't read book one and two. Ooh, tunnel. Nice sounds. Anyways, it's a mix of fairy tale retellings and combining, combining those to a story. Oh, there's many people here. Hold on. Continue talking. So it's a mixture of fairy tales, the Western and Eastern. I recognized um, Red Riding Hood and what is it? Goldilocks and Three Bears. And I think the Eastern story is something about the moon goddess. I think the hunter killed the sun birds and then was rewarded with an immortality drink but her wife drank it. And so we have these two old women, one who was Red Riding Hood and her childhood went. Oh, look at that. Can you see Tower Bridge? There. Red Riding Hood and the hunter have grown old now. They're both old women regretting their past. They meet and they have to hunt someone. Turns out to be the son of the hunter not red riding hood and so they follow them they share each other's stories and it's a nice short story it's talking about choices you made in when you were younger and wrong choices and i think it's telling more about the world than if you have read one and two i don't know even re-listening re to it I, I still don't really know what it is and it's enjoyable. I like the combination of the Eastern and Western fairy tales and mythology, but that's that. Other than that, I'm on the Thames Walk again, and I've also finished reading the Salmon something something, the book I talked about yesterday. Uh, like I said, it is a beautiful fable about life, loneliness among others, love, how people change when you look at them, when you love them, and everything. Doesn't it look nice? It's nice to be here. I'm not doing anything, just reading and walking around. But anyways, I'm enjoying myself. Friday evening, seven-ish, and I'm already back in Nakoda at my hotel. Let's put that aside. I'm old. I don't need to spend the whole night out anymore. Anyways, how did I do? I did do quite well. I think I had a very good touristy day, a very relaxing day. I started off running on the other side of the Thames this morning and the Thames walk was blocked as well, so I don't really know. Tomorrow there's no running. My feet are killing me. I did too many steps. I need to use my Oyster card more. After running, I sat around a bit and then went to have some coffee at Canada Wharf. I decided to go there because it was just a 20 minute walk and it was easier than finding out what bus to take. Then from there I thought, ah, I'll just walk to Borough Market. That's why I walked so much. At Borough Market it was a little bit too crowded for me at first, so I did an exhibition because I wasn't hungry yet at Borough Yards, Pulse Delight it was called, and I enjoyed it, but I don't think I understood what happened. It was basically different installments of 
video and sound and a lot of lights flashing. I liked it, but the description of every room that told us what the exhibit was about and what the installation was supposed to do to us. Um, yeah, I read the first few and then I stopped because I didn't really understand any of the things and nothing of the things happened that were supposed to happen. So I just enjoyed it for the lights and music and that was nice. Then I went back to Borough Market and had a look around there. It was less crowded and that was better for me. It was still nice and warm today, so that was good. And then I got some food, sat there and... Oh, I forgot. I spent a lot of time people watching at Tower Bridge before that. I didn't listen too much or many more audiobooks after I finished the one I already talked about because I wanted to participate and be present. So I noticed that being a good tourist has me not reading much and not listening to audiobooks, but it has me watch people be present and enjoy where I am. So that is good. The walking, you know, I'm genuinely a restless person. I have trouble finding places to sit down inside and be feel welcome and at home there. So that's why I walk around so much. With other people it's easier, but or outside. Today was warm, so outside sitting was nice. But I don't know if I can keep that up for another four days. I have six days in London. So tomorrow a friend of mine is coming to town, so I hope that's going to be less walking and I need to use my tube card, the Oyster card, more to ride the trains instead of walk everywhere. Because, like I said, I'm old. Anyways, I do like my hotel more and more the longer I stay here. The area is nice. I noticed the ferry that I have to take, it's free for me. That's why it hardly ever shows up on Google because it's rather expensive if I have to pay for it. But that way, it, since it's free for me, it's very easy to get to the hotel and back because the tube stop Canary Wharf, there's two lines going there. Whereas I don't really like changing into buses where I never understand where they are coming from and where they are going and all these things. It's actually easier to take the ferry and since I discovered yesterday there is a whole shopping mall that I have to pass through when I exit the station. Today I bought cookies so I'm gonna crawl into bed. I don't know if I'm going to read or watch random TV whatever is on. Probably fall asleep early. But that's my exciting day. Sunday morning update. Yesterday, I spent the whole day with my friend. It was amazing. We just hang out, had coffee and food. We went to Brick Lane, went of course to the Brick Lane bookshop. I didn't take any pictures. I didn't take any films. And then we went to Spitalfield Markers, had some food there, looked around, went to Covent Garden, more food, more looking around, more chatting. And then we ended up at Forbidden Planet for some reason. And I was a good girl. I didn't buy any books because I haven't finished my book yet. But I saw a lot of cute covers of hardbacks that are not out on paperback yet. But I don't like hardbacks and I'm traveling. So I'm very proud of myself for not buying books that I cannot read right now. And yeah, I haven't been to many bookshops either. So that's probably the reason why I could be so good. Hanging out with my friend just talking. So I got home really late. Last night, I'm pretty knackered and I woke up in a mood. Um, it's rather late-ish today. I think it's about 10-ish now, starting later than I normally would. It's okay, it's nothing bad, but I would love to spend the day in bed, but I'm on vacation, so I know that won't make me feel better at the end of the day. So I'm going for a run. Maybe I should have stayed in bed. I'm in South Bank again and I just went to Tate Modern. That was the most bland experience of art I've ever had. Nothing to say about the Tate, but more about the state of my mind. I'm just meh about everything. I also finished listening to the Full Moon Coffee Shop and I don't know where I got it. It's another one of these Japanese books that story like short stories circling around a cafe that appears mysteriously and invites certain people to have a drink 
and tell them their horoscope and things go on. Everything connects at the end, it's rather nice, but seriously, too much astrology for me and it's also a little bit bland. Nothing much happens. Nice stories, nice events, all the kids are connected and like I said, everything comes together in the last chapter and then the epilogue gives you a nice bow of everything that's happening. Okay, 20 past 8. I managed to arrive at the ferry when they're on the break. So let's quickly catch up on the day. It's Monday evening, the last full day I have in London. I had an okay good day. I slept in a little bit. I did not sleep in. What am I talking about? I was awake early and red in bed and then I didn't go running because I thought my body needed a break. And then I did a lot of stupid things throughout the day, mostly to do with food. I noticed I'm not very good with food. We all know that, right? But I'm even worse when I'm traveling and I don't know where to get food. So the awkward thing is finding food and going inside. I tend to be not able to go to these nice fancy cafes that I don't know, that look cute. Not always. Sometimes I can, sometimes I cannot because they just look off for me. And so I don't really know and I end up not eating because I get to eat. Yeah. That's my day with food. But I did a lot of cool things. I started my day going to Foils. Is that the first thing I did? I don't actually remember. But I went book shopping at Foils. And did you ever notice how overwhelming a bookshop can be? Like, I constantly know that the horrible thing about not being able to have a good bookshop around is that I cannot always go and buy all the books that I would like to have from a bookshop. But when I am around bookshops, I want to buy all the books. So I was at Foils, saw all the books I would like to read, but then I'm like, ah, but I know about these books, why should I buy them? And I want to look at books and find books that I don't know already, but can only find at a bookstore. And then I was in a nothing where I didn't feel like reading anything. Kind of weird, isn't it? Like, I have all the books, and they're all so nice and shiny, and I didn't find anything that I really wanted to read. That didn't stop me from buying books. I'll show them to you once we're back at the hotel. But yeah, it was kind of an awkward feeling at the bookstore. There's so many people walking by. Anyways, so after that I went to read at Soho Square and walked around Soho and Chinatown a little bit. Went to the National Gallery. I haven't been there in ages. There's a Van Gogh House uh, exhibition. But I didn't buy tickets for that, just went in and did their normal exhibitions or looked at the normal paintings they always have. Not even all of them, just I think one floor. And I got distracted by all the funny faces people pulled in 14th, 15th, 16th century paintings and then some impressionism. That was good, it didn't feel bad. Like I promised you yesterday, it's time to talk about the books I finished and bought yesterday. I finished reading Dollar Good Dream Department Store and it is a cozy read, it's fantasy. We are stuck in a world where all the people who fall asleep go and buy their dreams. We're told the background about how the department store got about and the importance of dreams and the ideas around that. We meet a few people, we don't go into depth into anyone, even though we have basically the main character we're following is Penny, who starts working at the Dollar Good Dream Department store, and we're accompanying her at her job and doing things and learning things, and so we get to know things and learn things as well. But nothing goes into deep character analysis. There's no character growth per se, there's nothing much behind the surface. So it's all superficial, but that's okay. It's what you get and you don't need anything else to enjoy the story. We get multiple people who come for various reasons and dreams and we see how the dreams help them in their real life and what they do. There are some themes superficially dealt with like grief or finding inspiration and getting out and do what you want and things like that. It's like I said, it's a cozy read, it's very enjoyable, the writing just flows, you are drawn into this world and enjoy it and you do want more. So I'm happy to hear that there apparently is 
a second book as this is supposed to be a duology. So looking forward to that. I also finished another audiobook, which is oh, a Psalm for the Wild Build, the first in the Monk and Robot series. It's also a duology and I'm currently listening to the second one. It's mostly cozy background after being really eh about the full moon coffee shop I thought I'd need something that I already know that I can listen on the background while I'm walking around town and not get too disappointed of. The Monk and Robert series is basically following G Monk Dex who wants to find out what they want. They find themselves being unhappy with their life at multiple stages in their life and then change something. And one day they run into a robot. Robots have left humans alone, basically left society and said, we can come back if you want to, but you cannot make us come back. And so the robot wants to find out what humans need and is accompanying Dex on their travels and Dex and robot their friendship, their ideas and questioning. It's its just cozy, it's fun. That's what I'm listening to. And now the fun part, what did I buy? Did you ever notice, did I mention that yesterday, that I was overwhelmed at foils because there were so many books and so many things. I found a lot of things that I had been meaning to get to, but never really did because I never see them in a bookstore and then I forget they exist. One of those is this one, the Department of Speculation. I've had that on my wish list for ages. I completely forgot what it was about or what it is about, what it is doing, why I wanted to read it. But I decided, as I don't know what I want to buy, I could just buy a slim book that I've been meaning to read for ages. The next book I didn't really know existed, but I'd been meaning to read more by David Foster Wallace for a while. So something to do with paying attention is apparently among his unfinished things, the last finished things that he had written before he died. And so I'm curious about this novella. I may have chosen shorter books because I need to travel home and then I can buy more books. Yeah, maybe. Another thing that I didn't know anything about, and that's what I love about going to bookstores, is finding things you haven't heard about. Empty Wardrobes is a very tiny, short and very fast read. I'm already halfway through. And this I just picked up because I liked the title, Empty Wardrobes. And I also I really like the cover, the size may have played a role. And it's about a woman, her mother-in-law and her daughter. So I was curious about that. So far, really enjoying it. It's such a fast read. Tell you more when I'm finished. The next book is mostly a cover by The Proposal. I don't know if I've read anything by the author. I feel I haven't, but it sounds so familiar. It looked familiar, so I might have seen it before, but I'm completely not sure because I can't find anything that reminds me of anything of this. But I love the cover, the title, and it says it's a space opera. So looking forward to reading that. Honestly, I need more time here just to read, but I have to go home today. The last book is, I'm not sure if I did the right thing, but it's a total cover buy. I saw that in foils. It says it's like the book of the year and I really am drawn to the cover, the title, Impossible Creatures. It's got a dragon and it really looks interesting, but it's apparently more a children's book and I'm not in the mood for children's books. But the book Sala said it's also the book of the year, not the children's book of the year. So I gave it a try mostly because I wanted the fun adventure and the dragon. So this is the one book where I'm not sure if I made a mistake, but who knows. So I need to get ready to check out, what is it, 10 o'clock in I'm not really sure what I want to do. I need to leave London to go to the airport by 5 p.m. So I do have a lot of time, but I do have luggage to carry around with me. I'm at Hyde Park right now and I got seriously overwhelmed. I went to Dawn's Books, but overwhelmed and I had to leave again. There's just too many people, too much going on. I'm, I need a day of rest. I need a day away from everyone. So I ended up having a picnic and reading in Hyde Park. That was really nice. I think 
I usually stayed around in this area and I need to do that again next time when I'm coming. That's definitely a thing that's going to happen. I'm going to come again because the last few days I felt more like myself than I have in a long time. So I should have started traveling here than trying new places. Apparently there's no travel anxiety around here. Anyways, I'm almost done with empty wardrobes. Got about 20 pages left. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen next because everything had a turn and a turn and a turn and I was like, wow, did not see that coming. Really like the way how it is narrated because the person who's narrating it is not the main character and she's very unreliable in the fact that she's unknowable about the lot of things that have happened and or that have happened and that she just imagines happened. And it's really interesting. I really like the story. It's about this woman who really grieved her husband or mourned her husband and didn't really think of anything else for 10 years. The husband was very unambitious and was against capitalism, wanted to be different than his, grand than his mother. And yeah, she was rich and always wanted him to be something and he didn't want to be anything, which he then turned out to be and left her nothing when he died. So she and her young daughter had struggling times and then she was just continuously grieving or mourning. Which is the right word? I don't know. Anyways, and then an event happened. The mother-in-law finally tells her something about her dead husband and she's like, oh, ho, ho. now things need to change. And then things happen, and other things happen, and now another thing happened. I'm just, wow, that would be all spoilers because it's one of the parts that are happening. But the way it is narrated, the way it is told, you really get snippets and go on and on and keep thinking like, okay, this is bad, now this is going to happen, and then other things happen. I really enjoyed this. Goodbye. Like in a good shopping buy. I did a good job buying that. Okay. Now I'm heading to the airport.